everybody, and welcome to Mike Norichlow Online. That's me, sharing my love for people, wine, food, and all things made. I love doing that. Passionately. Okay, today's episode. Steering away a little bit from shotgun. Oh, make sure you check out the episode below this. Maria Jose, the Rioja, Spain. Don't miss it. Amazing winery, amazing winemaker. They've been making wine for like 133 years. <clears throat> All right? Contrasting that a little bit. Brand new winery, newest winery in beautiful British Columbia. This is their um, Third Leaf 2009. They've just released their wines. I want to introduce them to you. I want to taste them along with you and see what we think. They're called Bailey Groman. Now, Bailey Groman Winery. Located in an area in beautiful British Columbia called the Columbia Kootenays. Now, the Columbia Kootenay region, there's a small city called Creston. These guys are just outside of Creston. Now, this area um, has a really neat microclimate to it. That area can typically be a cooler climate, and it is a cooler climate with a shorter growing season. Nothing wrong with that. Shorter growing season just means choose the right grape varieties for what your land, what your climate's going to do for you. I think these guys have done that. Gewurz, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir. Those are typically really good grape varieties for a cooler climate. Now, the name Bailey Groman, it comes from the, a European aristocrat. <laughs> His name is William Bailey Groman. Now, rumor has it, or legend has it, whatever, he was gallivanting around the area of southern BC uh, with his buddy Teddy Roosevelt. Hmm, Teddy Roosevelt, that's kind of significant. Anyway, they loved hunting, they loved the outdoors, they were hunting goats or something along those lines. Um, William discovered the area around Creston, around the Kootenays, uh, discovered a huge flat floodplain. Now, this floodplain flooded from the rivers and the lakes in the area. Um, and he devised, he was kind of the original pioneer who devised a system of dikes and canals that could um, take all the water out of the region, the flooding out of the region, and it could become a great farming region. That was his vision um, for the Kootenai area. So like I said, he was one of the original pioneers. Along the, along the way, different businesses and stuff got involved and created this great farming region. Centuries later, we're here now, not me, but farmers and stuff are there now planting. Now, the Kootenais... Typically, you'll find very much similar to what the Okanagan used to be. Lots of peaches, lots of cherries, lots of apples, lots of orchards. Orchards typically can um, say, hey, why don't we plant some grapes here? If orchards can do it, peaches and stuff can do it, why can't grapes? These guys are trying that out among a few other wineries in the area. Let's see what's going on with Bailey Groman Winery. I'm excited to try them out. I love trying out new wineries. They're sticking with under screw cap. <clears throat> Winery, um, the winemaker Dan Barker from New Zealand. Screw cap, very much New Zealand style, keeping things fresh. Owners, we've got Petra Flaw and Bob Johnson. Petra and Bob, let's see how your wines are working out. So I'm going to start with their first one, 2009 Pinot Gris. They've got really nice labeling too. I actually really like their packaging. Clear bottles, pretty cool. Don't see that often either. Okay, Pinot Gris. Right away. Okay, on the nose. <laughs> okay, on the nose. Actually, very classic Pinot Gris. Nothing disjointed, nothing weird. I like that. Oh, in 2009, excellent. And let me push that. Excellent vintage to be releasing your first wine. Um, the Okanagan excelled in 2009. We made some excellent wines. Slightly cooler climate region like Creston. Your wines are going to rock from 09. So you guys made a great decision, in my opinion, to release your 09s. On the nose, like I said, classic Pinot Gris. It has that kind of apple cross, kiwi cross, like honeydew. Yeah, kind of that, not green underripe, just green fruits, like I just mentioned, green fruits. Bit of melon, kiwi, apple. Mmm, mmm. Okay, on the palate. Cool has an interesting spice, right on the tip of my tongue. Very interesting, unique spice. Um, palate reflects the nose. Balanced palate, interesting kind of uh, citrus, lemon, lemon citrus finish. Carries on a lot of that kiwi and kind of uh, honeydew melon across the palate. Very classic Pinot Gris. Nice Pinot Gris, solid effort. Um, I like that wine. Definitely a very decent Pinot Gris.
yeah, very approachable Pinot Gris. Okay, next wine. They're 2009, it's all their own nines, Gewürztraminer. Now Gewürztraminer, it's always stood the test of time in cooler climates. Ourselves a rinse here. Cool. Gewürztraminer is definitely an earlier ripening grape, does super well in Germany, just, just rocks it kind of wherever. But again, like I said, especially cooler climates. So let's see how this one works out. Whatever. <laughs> okay, on the nose. I think I'm gonna like this Gewürz. One thing that jumps out right away to me is definitely the lychee, which is very classic to Gewürz, with a neat kind of um, icing sugar. Kind of powdered icing sugar. With a bit of, it's definitely got lychee. I'm going for peach as well, totally got peach. Maybe a hint of star fruit or something like that too. Hmm. Pretty classic converts on the nose. Okay, on the palate. Typical converts, hint of sweetness up front. Um, lots of lychee, peach, uh, floral, kind of almost rose petal on the palate. Definitely got that floral on the palate. Decent lingering floral finish um, as well in the finish. Nice a little bit of ginger. Ginger is often something I, I enjoy on Gewürz Schmier. Um, definitely a decent Gewürz. It's, it's, it's lacking a hint of acidity. The Pinot Gris had a bit more acidity to it, more of that tart citrus finish. Um, the finish on this one is lacking a hint of acidity, but still, solid Gewürz Schmier. Um, very enjoyable. I like it. Cooler climate, definitely the way to do Gewürz. All right, next wine. Now this is their rosé, doing a rosé. Now it's their Blanc de Noirs. Um, it's their 09. It is 100% Pinot Noir, and it's a blend of a few different Pinot Noir clones that they're growing there. Nice Pinot Noir color, actually. Pinot Noir color, rosé color. Nice pink with almost like in the light. Go out of the camera again, like not a few episodes, sorry. Um, kind of an orange hue to it. Definitely interesting color, very elegant color. Okay, on the nose, it's got a, a very red berry medley. I'm definitely going with ripe strawberry. Ripe strawberry, a red currant, a bit of raspberry. I would almost, I would definitely venture to even say kind of watermelon on the nose on this one. Definitely, kind of that round flavor smell of watermelon. Round, soft flavor as well of watermelon. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, definitely a fair amount uh, of residual sweetness on this. Um, again, makes it very approach approachable, very saleable. I think a lot of people will enjoy this wine for the sweetness. Um, very approachable. On the palate, you get a lot of that, that red berry medley. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm gonna cross like strawberry watermelon on the palate. This is interesting, definitely strawberry watermelon. Um, yeah, soft, soft palate, hint of spice again. On the um, on the tip of my tongue, it's almost like they've got this this fingerprint, <laughs> this slight fingerprint with the Bailey Groman winery. Yeah, but soft palate, not a whole lot of length to it. Definitely approachable, easy sipper, not a lot of depth of character to it, but a fun rosé. Put it that way, just a fun rosé. All right, and last but not least. Their 2009 Pinot Noir. I don't know if I showed you the label, but whatever. They're VQAing. Looks like they VQAed all their wines. There we go. Good way to get some uh, get some exposure. Um, make sure you look for these guys. Ask your local VQA store. Hey, you guys carrying Bailey Groman? Really like to try out their wines, and then go home, open MN Online, and try them along with me. Might as well. All right. Pinot Noir. Okay. Nice light color. Can see right through it. Pinot Noir, I love when I see light color. If I see a dark over extracted Pinot Noir, it tends to, tends to ruin it for me. But here's the thing with this Pinot Noir. Right away on the nose, the fruit is a bit hidden. It's a bit overshadowed by oak. Definitely kind of get that vanilla, uh, butterscotchiness on the nose. A little bit chilly, but I'm gonna warm it up. Um, definitely kind of overpowered with, with a bit of oak. Now, the oak is not 
a bad oak. It doesn't just taste like wood. It's got some really neat flavor characteristics to it. I'm definitely going to say I find a bit of almost pomegranate in there, a um, bit of black currant. I definitely kind of black currant pomegranate. Fair amount of like vanilla, butterscotch, caramel, oak characteristics. Hmm. Okay. On the palate. Wow. Okay. I mentioned spice in this one, this one. This definitely has that spice as well. You guys definitely have a bit of fingerprint on your wines. I like that. It's got some signature character, recognizable. Um, that said, the oak on the palate does come through a fair amount. Um, still elegant oak flavors, butterscotch, caramel, vanilla, um, but takes away a little bit from the subtle um, flavors of Pinot Noir. Still a decent wine. Um, definitely kind of got that black currant to it. Venture to say almost maybe cranberry, something like that, but getting a lot of those oak flavors. Anyway, okay Pinot Noir, definitely okay Pinot Noir. To their defense though, it's like their third leaf. They've just started out, so first released vintage. Whites tend to really always do well, young and whatever. Whites can pretty much always rock it. Whites are very safe, especially in a cooler climate. Um, Pinot Noir is one of those wines that develops um, character with time, definitely develops character with time. And this is not a foul Pinot Noir, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, so in time, I'm super excited to see what their Pinot Noir does because cooler climates, Burgundy, the most famous place on the planet for Pinot Noir, is not a cooking hot climate. So give these guys a few years, their Pinot Noir is going to rock. These whites, very solid whites, very enjoyable, very approachable rosé, excellent. So thank you so much, uh, Bailey Groman, for starting up in Creston, BC. Putting your foot in, trying something new in a new area. Super stoked to see what you guys are doing in the future. Yeah, that's about it. I will definitely have a link below the video to Bailey Groman's website. Check them out. Um, what more can I say other than thank you so much for watching today. And we'll see you on the next episode. And don't forget, wine. Depretentious sized.